I, I didn't really choose to cover a conflict and war. War kind of chose me. You know, I've been a reporter for you know 20 plus years, and my reporting has kind of spanned every type of medium. I, I did print in my very first uh, job as a, as a reporter at age 15. I've been in broadcast, and now I'm writing books. I think desensitization is a very real consequence of being in conflict too long. Um, I've been a journalist for 20 years. Half of that has been in war zones. And so I've seen people killed at all ranges of the spectrum, from great distances, from aerial bombardments, to someone being as close to another person as an embrace. It does affect you, and in some cases you become desensitized to it. I remember one very specific case when I was covering the war um, in Kashmir, and there had been a grenade attack that killed three children, and I remember seeing them uh, in a, a morgue on a slab, their, their bodies completely broken, still wearing the jeans and the tennis shoes that they had been wearing when they were alive a few hours earlier. And I remember feeling nothing, you know, simply needing to get the shot. And that was kind of a wake-up call to me that maybe something isn't right. In certain decisions, I chose to be a reporter uh, and, and not necessarily connect with my humanity. And in doing so, um, I had to live with the consequences of those decisions. Uh, I let someone die in a war zone, and so became complicit in his death and complicit in his murder. It's something that I found that I couldn't live with. I wish I would have known that at the time. I wish I would have been more aware. I didn't do it on purpose, obviously, but at the same time, I was so focused on being a reporter that I wasn't aware of what was happening in that environment, that another human being could be killed um, if I walked out of the room that I was in. Uh, and I did. I walked out of that room and that person was killed. Every war experience is unique. Every war experience is complex in its own way. So the treatment and the solution to dealing with that trauma is going to be different for every individual. But it begins with storytelling. My only lesson in this book is that we need to tell the stories. We don't have to tell them with a sense of shame. We don't have to tell them with a sense of pride. One thing that seems to be consistent with all of the stories in which soldiers or Marines or other service people are coping well is a good support structure, is a family surrounding them that loves them, that is there for them, and has been part of that storytelling process, unburdening them of what they've experienced, sharing that burden with them.